Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to discuss about return and risk of a portfolio. And we are going to do that under two scenarios. Scenario one is going to be where our assets that are to be combined in a portfolio are having their returns as positively correlated so that they move in the same direction. And scenario two will be where we calculate the return and risk of a portfolio of assets uh, whose returns are negatively correlated with each other. Therefore, they move in opposite directions. Let's focus on the first case first, the positively correlated assets. Let's assume a little uh, numerical information. Let's say we want to invest 70% of our money in asset A and 30% of our money in asset B. And we have some data here. We have assumed two states of economy. One, the economy might be doing very good and the other, it, not, it might not be doing so good. And the probability of each of these states is 50% each. We also have some data about the returns of these two assets, asset A and asset B. During good times, asset A provides you a 10% return. During bad times, asset A provides you with a 5% return. During good times, asset B provides you a 20% return. And during poor times, asset B provides you a 10% return. Our first task is to um, find out the expected return on the portfolio and this we are going to do under two steps. Step one is going to be, let us first of all find out the expected return of the portfolio during good times. So then, how are we going to accomplish that? What we are going to do is we are going to pull up this number from here because 70% of our money is supposed to be invested in asset A. So let us write here 70% and during good times asset A provides us with a return of 10%. Let's write that here 10% and then we put a plus sign and write down the other part of our money which is 30% remaining. So 0.3, 30% of our money goes to asset B and asset B provides us with a 20% return during good times. So let us write here 20%. When we, when we perform this calculation, we are going to get a result of 13%. So during good times, if you combine asset A and asset B to the extent of 70% and 30% respectively, you can earn a return of 13% on that combination of assets or that portfolio. Now, what would happen to your expected return of a portfolio of these two assets when the economy is not doing so great? So let us do that. Expected return of a portfolio during poor times. Again, 70% of your money goes to asset A, but during poor times, asset A offers you a 5% return. So let's write here 5. And plus... 30% of our money goes to asset B. Let's write here 30%. And then the return of asset B during poor times is 10%. So let us write here 10%. And then when we perform this calculation, it is going to give us 6.5%. So if the going is good, you can earn a 13% return on this portfolio. And if the going is not so good, you can earn a 6.5% return on this portfolio. So now what is going to be our expected return? We know that there's a 50% chance that the going might be good actually. So what we are going to do in step two is we are going to write here 50% chance of the possibility that the economy will be doing well. And if that happens, the return that we are going to be earning is 13%. So let's write here 13%. Then there is another 50% chance that the economy may not be doing so good. So let's write here another 50%. And if that happens, the portfolio will give you a return of 6.5%. So let's write here 6.5%. And then close the bracket and solve this thing, which is going to give us 9.75%. So this is the expected return of our portfolio. So let us highlight here this thing in bold. 9.75% would be the expected return of your portfolio that is comprised of asset A and asset B 
where 70% of your money goes to asset A and 30% uh, of your money goes to asset B. And during good times, the return would be this. During bad times, the return would be this. So on an average, the expected return would be 9.75%. Now let's see how to calculate the risk of a portfolio. For that purpose, we can calculate the variance and we can calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio. Let us first of all find out the variance of the portfolio. What we are going to do here is we are going to write down the first probability, which is this one, the probability of the economy doing well, that is 0 0.5. And then we are going to start a bracket and inside the bracket we are going to write here first of all the return of the portfolio during good times because we wrote down the probability of good times, 0.5. So let us write here the return during good times, that is 13%. And then from this 13%, we need to subtract the expected return of the portfolio, which is 9.75%. So let's write here 9.75. We are going to close this bracket and raise this thing to the power of 2. After that, we are going to put a plus sign and then we are going to start talking about the other probability, which is that the economy may not do so well. The possibility of that is 50% again. So let us write this 50% here, 0 0.5. Then let us start a bracket and let us write down if the economy really did not do so well, we would uh, earn a return of 6.5% on our portfolio. Let us write this return here, 6.5%. And from this 6.5%, we need to subtract the expected return of the portfolio, which is this 9.75%. So let us write this here, 9.75%. And close the bracket and raise this thing to the power of 2. Now, if uh, we open up these brackets and solve this, we are going to get our result as 10.56%. So 10.56% is our variance. We know that if we want to find out the standard deviation from here, we need to simply take the square root of this number 10.56%. So let us write here, standard deviation is equal to the square root of 10.56% and that will be equal to 3.24%. So the risk of this portfolio according to standard deviation is 3.24%. How do we now interpret this result. The interpretation is that on an average we are expecting the portfolio to return to us 9.75% but this can vary because there is a standard deviation involved. So we can deviate from this expected level of return. How much would be the deviation? The deviation would be 9.75% that is our expected return and um, it could be plus minus what it could deviate to the extent of 3.24 percent either in the negative direction or in the positive direction so therefore the range of variation would be either you could fall below 9.75 percent to the extent of 3.24 percent so that your return could fall below 9.75 percent and become 6.51 percent how did we get this 6.51%? 9.75 minus 3.24. Or your return could exceed the average return, that is 9.75%, to the tune of 3.24%. So your upper limit of variation could be 9.75 plus 3.24, that is 12.99%. So therefore, um, your range of variation would be 12.99% minus 6.51 is equal to 6.48 percent. This is the range of your variation. Now let us see uh, what would happen to the same portfolio if we assume the assets to be negatively correlated with each other, meaning thereby that as the return on asset A falls from 10 to 5 percent, the return on asset B moves from or goes up from 10 to 20 percent. So they behave in an opposite fashion. So therefore, they are negatively correlated. Let us take those um, two steps to find out the expected portfolio return once more. 
How do we do that? First of all, we find out the expected return of the portfolio during good times. And to do that, we first of all need to write down the amount of money we invest in asset A, that is 70%. So we write 0 0.7 and then during good times, asset A offers us a return of 10%. So we write 10 and then 30% of our money. So let's write here 0.3. This 30% goes to asset B and during good times, asset B offers us again a return of 10%. So therefore, the return of the portfolio during good times would be 70% of 10 that is 7 and 30% of 10 that is 3. So 7 plus 3, 10%. Now let us repeat the exercise for the poor scenario, expected return of the portfolio if the going is not so good. So again, 70% of your money is going to asset A and during poor times, asset A is offering you a 5% return plus 30% of your money is going to asset B and during poor times asset B offers you a 20% return. So therefore, when you compute this, you are going to get 9.5% return. Now step number two to calculate the expected return of the portfolio and during this step we take into account the probabilities. There is a 50% chance that the going will be good and if that happens the return of the portfolio will be 10% and there is another 50% chance that the going will not be so good and during that time the return of the portfolio will be 9.5% so what is the expected return of the portfolio let us write it down here 50% chance that the return that the going might be good and if that happens the return fetched by the portfolio will be 10% plus another 50% chance that the, uh, that the um, going might not be so good and if that happens, the return of the portfolio would be 9.5%. So if we do that, the return on the portfolio expected return would be 9.75%. What you should observe is that even when the assets are negatively correlated, the return is still 9.75% which compares to this scenario where the um, assets returns were positively correlated. So there is no difference between the expected return under both scenarios. But as we will observe further, there is going to be an impact on the risk. What we expect is that since the assets now are negatively correlated, the risk should fall down. Let us verify that. So like before, let us find out the variance. How do we do that? We write down the first probability that is 0.5 or 50%. Let's write that here. And since this is the probability that pertains to a good time period, let us in the bracket write down the return of the portfolio during good times, 10%. So 10 minus what is the expected return? 9.75. Let's write that here, 9.75. Close the bracket and raise this to the power of 2 and then put a plus sign and write down the other probability which is 50% again for the poor scenario. So let's write down 0.5 and inside the bracket let us write down the return during the poor times 9.5%. So let us write it down here 9.5 minus what is the expected return 9.75. So let's write that 9.75 and raise this thing to the power of 2 and when we solve it, we are going to get 0.06%. So observe, the variance has fallen from 10.56% to 0.06% when the assets are negatively correlated. So therefore, if we want to find out the standard deviation now, we just take the square root of this number here. So let's write it square root of 0.06% and that gives us 0.244%. So, the um, standard deviation, the risk in terms of standard deviation has also fallen down from 3.24% to 0.244%. So, the interpretation would be that the actual portfolio return could be your average return that is 9.75%, that is your expected return of the portfolio, this one. And uh, 
plus minus so let's copy this symbol here and paste it here plus minus plus minus what plus minus the level of your standard deviation 0 0.244 percent so that the range of your variation would be uh, 9.75 percent minus 0 0.244 to 9.75 percent plus 0 0.244 and that gives you 9.51 percent to 9.99 percent therefore it means your range is 9.99 minus 9.51 and that gives you 0 0.48 percent what you will observe is that your range of variation has also fallen from 6.48 percent to just 0.48 percent therefore meaning that your returns are much more stable in uh, in the event where the assets are negatively correlated with each other. The beauty is that you have been able to preserve the same level of return 9.75% in both scenarios but in the second scenario where the assets were negatively correlated with each other your risk has fallen very very close to zero just half a percent uh, of variation here and you look at your standard deviation that is also pretty minuscule. So I guess this, this would help you in understanding the return and risk of a portfolio under two scenarios when the assets are positively correlated and when the assets are negatively correlated. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Bye-bye.